Mo3 is considered one of the most successful and talented artists in Dallas and maybe Texas history, and also one of the most controversial. Make a status about me, been making a thousand statuses about Mo3 came up from the streets of North Dallas to become a Texas legend in rap. His raw lyrics and undeniable talent captivated audiences. But in the shadows of all the fame, conflict was always present. Mo3 was from Dallas, but it was in Fort Worth, a city with its own culture and musical face, that tensions would escalate dramatically. In a loosely connected web to beef with the face of Fort Worth, Go Yayo, the conflict took a crazy turn, and as those lyrics that Mo3 articulates became a real confrontation had turned tragic in a Fort Worth nightclub, sending shockwaves of sadness through the city, ultimately causing an entire city to turn on one artist. And while in his death, he is one of the most beloved, while he was here, it certainly didn't feel that way. This is why Fort Worth hated Mo3. Mo3 was born Melvin Noble on May 31st, 1992 in Dallas, Texas. Mo3 is on record stating that his childhood and early life was a struggle. He was bunched up in a two bedroom, like all my partners like. Being raised by a single mother, Mo3 and his family would face severe financial difficulty. All the challenges Mo3 faced ultimately is what turned him into a star because that pain and struggle ultimately is what made his music unique. Mo3 would get the chip on his shoulder from the years of school when people would roast him for wearing old clothes. However, within that struggle was another struggle. Mo3 would start to get into legal trouble. I stay for like, I wanna say like four to five months, uh, come back home on a monitor on probation. Uh, catch the same charge again, now I'm going to placement, you know, in Texas. So much trouble that he felt remorse for his mother for all that he had done. Living with my auntie. She had to move in with my auntie. After one of Mo 3's last bids, the decision to start to rap had been made, and Mo 3 was officially on his way to become a Texas legend. Mo 3's rap career is unique because, see, he's probably one of the last artists to get a street buzz without the internet. Uh, I didn't know nothing about iTunes. I ain't know nothing. This was done by selling CDs hand to hand in the streets of Dallas. So you feel like you sold over 10,000 just in that section. Mo3 had several creative ways to sell CDs, and as he got bigger, he and DJ D-Real formed what to me is the most effective non-major label independent distribution strategy of all time. He, 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 he put me in certain places where I couldn't get at the time. Like. With D-Real tapes in almost every CD shop in the region, combined with Mo3's undeniable talent, Mo3 quickly rose to the top in the DFW and surrounding areas. Mo3 independently sold enough music to buy a $80,000 car. This day, about 80,000. About 80, about 80 bands? Because he built that down home, loyal, fan by fan, CD by CD fan base, he was starting to sell out large venues. And these venues would sing an hour of Mo3 music word for word. He would even get the attention of his idol growing up, Lil Boosie. Mo3's internet presence was starting to catch up with his street presence. The city of Dallas had two other major figureheads that were once allies that eventually ended up as foes to Mo3. I don't know, man. Never heard of I know everybody from my city making no. But that's another story for another time. The main villain or hero, depending on your perspective in this story, is the face of Fort Worth music at the time, Go Yayo. So you should have never said nothing about no Fort Worth murder, all that spot line, bro. Now, it's worth pointing out that like most beefs in the DFW history, it comes between two people who were once cool with each other at one point, and at the very least collaborators, as Mo3 had appeared on a song with Go Yayo in the past, and the two would frequently be seen together and booked to be performing together. Now, there are several different stories on how the beef originally took place, with one story being that Go Yayo had actually requested Mo3 set get cut off. Come on, I love you. Come on. 
Other theories suspect that it has something to do with Nana, a former Go Yayo and Mo3 affiliate. At the time, Mo3 claims that Gayo told him that Nana told him that he would slap him. Nana said he was gonna slap you on Crip. So I'm like. Another theory, of course, is a female. And while that's actually the root cause of a lot of issues, I believe this one is the least likely to be true in this situation. Either way, when that beef escalated to its max, it spilled over into the beefs that Mo3 was having in Dallas, with Mo3's manager Rainwater stating that the whole city of Dallas went against Mo3 when that happened. It fell out. The whole city of Dallas went against Mo3. Okay. See, in the beginning, there was Go Yayo making noise musically, and then there was Mo3. Regardless of what anyone else says, everyone else a part of that era came after. And I also want to note that at the very beginning, Go Yayo and Mo3's beef wasn't really as serious as people may think. Shit or not, wasn't no, wasn't no conflict, but I actually did see him. I saw Yayo had way more beefs at the time that were more serious, and so did Mo3 both with other artists. However, that's until the night of which what was supposed to be a turned up night in Fort Worth, Texas was about to unfold into a tragic event that would shake the city's core. Mo3 was set to perform. It was his birthday bash, which was booked in a club in Fort Worth named Phantom at the time. As the story goes, at first, everything was cool. Mo3 had most of North Dallas with him. It was his birthday, everything was fine. According to Mo3 affiliate No Flaw Peach, Goyeo attempted to get on stage with Mo3, a request that Mo3 would politely turn down. Whereas Yo-Yo, bro wanted to get on the stage with him, three was like, I'm cooling with my knife niggas. Stating that because he has in his entire crew with him, which he normally didn't have, he just wanted to rock out with his guys on stage that night. Now remember, at this point, there had been tension, but not just full out beef yet. So it's very likely that Mo3 did politely decline. However, this night for sure is what started the beef. Now, there's two sides to every story, right? And only Mo3 and his affiliates have spoken out publicly, so I'll tell their side first. According to them, at a certain point, Goyeo supposedly shouted something at Mo3. So before you know it, according to them, the entire club had turned on Mo3 and his entourage. Oh, for work standing up in that bitch on tables, no, they cracking they sh And according to Mo3, in a later deleted Facebook live stream, it appeared to him that he was set up, had no way out, and Mo3, in his words, did what he had to do to make it home. In that came the death of Hector Wilkins, known around the city as Half. Half was beloved by the city of Fort Worth and actually was just a huge staple in the Fort Worth nightlife. Half was allegedly involved because of Goyeo. Now, while no one including Goyeo has spoke about this publicly from the Fort Worth side, here's an alternate version to this story. According to many Fort Worthians that were there, the altercation with Goyeo is indeed true. However, supposedly, the entire club did not turn on him. The story goes that Mo3 and his camp began acting erratically after the altercation with Goyeo. They left untouched and started recklessly firing, striking and killing half. As Half Pint highlighted in a recent interview, Fort Worth is a city where the major players are still very active on Facebook. In the next morning on Facebook, drama unfolded even more. Mo3 and Yayo traded jabs at each other, with Mo3 seeming to claim the shooting, saying to Yayo, we really clear shit. We came to your city and turned it to a war zone, in which he would later walk back in an RIP post to have, claiming that he had to defend himself and also claiming he knew nothing of a shooting. Either way, when a Dallas native comes in and takes out a beloved, deeply ingrained member of Fort Worth out and seemingly boasts about it the next day, Mo3 at that time was not a favorite in Fort Worth. Not only Mo3, Goyeo received a lot of backlash as well and the Mo3 and Yayo beef had now went to the next level. I fuck Yayo, that nigga such such all that weird gay ass and I don't give a fuck. It's worth noting, Mo3 was picked up on that, but later after having to go broke to pay 90,000 for defense, he ultimately had that case dropped. Man, I spent like 90 bands, man. Howling out, yeah. The city of Fort Worth was livid about that night. 
with many Facebook users sharing their thoughts. Mo3 went on to rap about catching that body in several songs and even in later live streams. The family of Half, I'm sure still to this day, has a void that it has to carry. I mean, how would it feel to you if someone you love was taken off of Earth and by a high profile artist who music plays everywhere and is bragging in his music about committing that. The shooting impacted the entire DFW rap scene because at that point, sides had to be picked and allegedly, Mo3 was upset that people picked Yayo. What you gotta feel like this? Cause you talk to Yayo. Well, you should've told what you call. But despite all that, Mo3 would continue to have musical success and so would the city of Fort Worth. On November 11, 2020, Mo3 was gunned down on a highway in Dallas. A Dallas rapper was murdered outside of his car on I-35 near the Dallas. And while that marked the majority of the end of the hate of Mo3, the death of Mo3. The day Mo3 died, hashtag long live half, rang throughout Facebook that day. Today, the consistent sentiment is love for Mo3 in the city of Fort Worth with some people even admiring from the gangster angle that he shot himself out of a situation like that. Oh uh, man, that little nigga went out how <clears throat> a G nigga supposed to go out. However, most people now recognize that Mo3, hate him or love him, was one of the most talented Dallas Fort Worth artists of all time and wish the outcome was different. Do it again. All right, really, man, we here, man. Shout out to y'all, man. I appreciate y'all.